Welcome to our second set of notes in Unit 3 in the Biological Basis of Psychology. We're now that we've talked about the smallest, most basic unit of the nervous system, we're going to talk about the nervous system itself, as well as its kind of sister, which is the endocrine system. So you have a set of notes on paper that is a nice, beautiful map, essentially, of the different parts of the nervous system. Um, the big thing being that we have a nervous system, right? And it consists of all the nerve cells in our body. It's the body's speedy electrochemical communication system. So it's very fast, okay? It's very fast. It's like electricity fast. Um, and it is electricity. It's electro and chemical because neurotransmitters are chemical, right? So then we have two parts in our nervous system. We have the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central, think of it as the center of your body as is shown on this image here. The orange being your brain and your spine. That's it. It's in the center of your body, brain and spine. That is your central nervous system. That's all, pretty simple. The peripheral nervous system is the sensory and motor neurons that connect the central nervous system to the rest of the body. So think of your peripheral nervous system as in the periphery of your body, okay? Your brain and spine can only do so much. It's your peripheral nervous system that reads all the way out to your fingertips and all the way down to your feet. They both, the peripheral nervous system both sends messages through or from your spine, brain and spine, but also brings messages to your spine and your brain. So the central nervous system, it's the neural center of the body, meaning the brain is, it's our body's control center, okay? Um, whereas the spine is like a super highway of nerves, like big, huge super highway. It's a means of transmitting, transmitting messages between the brain and the body, okay? Can't, can't really do much without either of these. So the peripheral nervous system then also has two parts. It has somatic and autonomic. Somatic or soma, which you have seen in our last set of notes, the cell body or soma, right? The soma is the cell body of a neuron. So the somatic nervous system is that of our body, you could say, but it controls voluntary movements and communication to and from the sensory organs. Um, you control these items. They don't just happen. Okay, so me doing my little macaronis here is my somatic nervous system. Okay, you turning your head, you flipping your hair, you driving a car, you walking, you throwing a ball, you writing your notes. It's all somatic because you consciously choose to do those things. Whereas the autonomic nervous system, you could also say is like an automatic. It controls involuntary or automatic functions or items that happen automatically within our body, like breathing, heartbeat, digestion. Pretty simple, the differences between those two. So then under the autonomic nervous system, we have sympathetic and parasympathetic. Sympathetic nervous system, think when you're sympathetic, right? You, how, you understand what, how other people are feeling emotionally, right? Um, it, it's kind of what it deals with, sort of. So the sympathetic nervous system is the division of the autonomic nervous system that arouses the body. Don't think in a sexual way. That's not what we're talking about in psychology here. But preparing it to act or react in stressful situations and expend energy. And I want you to write this down. Your sympathetic nervous system prepares you for fight or flight. It's not that it is fight or flight. It's that it prepares you for fight or flight physically. Notice that it's in the autonomic nervous system. So it, this happens automatically. Let's say you're in a car accident. Immediately, your sympathetic nervous system is going to kick in and it's going to do things like increase your heart rate, um, which then increases your breathing rate and the oxygenation of your blood, right? It dilates your pupils so that you can see better. But it also then slows down digestion because you don't need to be digesting in that exact moment, which does take energy. So you use the energy that would have been used to digest to do things like fight or flee. So then the parasympathetic nervous system, think of like paralysis, paralysis, right? It's like, not that we would wish that on anyone, but something that is paralyzed is still is stagnant, right? So parasympathetic nervous system is the division of the ANS that calms the body. It conserves its energy and helping keep a constant internal state. 
So the parasympathetic kicks in after the stressful situation is over and brings the body back to homeostasis. So this image just shows you exactly what the sympathetic nervous system does on the left-hand side of this image. Dilates the pupils, accelerates heartbeat, inhibits digestion, um, stimulates glucose release by the liver, right? That's the expenditure of energy, essentially. Stimulates secretion of epinephrine and norepinephrine from the adrenal glands, which would be adrenaline. You need to make a quick note. The sympathetic nervous system is then backed up by the adrenal gland. It doesn't necessarily cause the secretion of these things because that's actually part of the endocrine system that we'll talk about in a moment. It relaxes the bladder, again, digestion, okay? And then the parasympathetic nervous system is like rest and digest. It calms us back down. So it brings our pupils back to normal, slows our heartbeat and our breathing, simulates digestion again because we have the energy to do it, right? Um, and allows blood flow to certain organs that we really don't need in fight or flight. So kinds of neurons, let's talk about this really quickly. Sensory neurons are also called afferent or afferent neurons. You have to know them both ways, a sensory and afferent. These types of neurons that we have all throughout our, all throughout our body carry incoming information from the sensory receptors to the central nervous system. So if I pick up my phone, I notice it's kind of heavy because it's so huge and it's kind of you know, large and smooth, right? My fingers, right, are picking up that message, my sensory receptors, and my sensory neurons are sending that message to my spine that this is a huge, gigantic phone. Then we have interneurons. This is kind of like the one, two, three step process here. Interneurons are only in our CNS. They are only in our spine and our brain. They act as messengers between the other two types of neurons and exist entirely within the CNS. So an interneuron is simply the, the messenger, the in-between guy of sensory and motor neurons. So the motor neurons, or efferent, carry outgoing information from the CNS to muscles and glands. So if my brain says, answer your phone, Mrs. Rice, my motor neurons will take that message from my brain, from my spine, out my hand to pick up, swipe an answer, okay? Um, a quick kind of mnemonic to help you remember that motor neurons are efferent. Efferent starts with an E, so does engine. Engine starts with an E and it's a motor neuron, right? Like you have an engine in your motor, in your car. Right? So it's motor neurons that go away from the CNS, whereas afferent or sensory neurons bring messages to the CNS. So let's talk really quickly about how the three types of neurons communicate. Okay? Let's say that I would like to write something. Okay? I'm going to pick up my pen and write something. Okay? So first of all, my brain might tell, is going to send the message of pick up the pen. So motor neurons would pick up the pen and my sensory neurons would receive the information that I have picked up the pen, okay? But let's talk about when we're sensing something from the external environment. Let's say that I get too close to a fire, right? And it's really hot. So my body, my sensory receptors on my skin, they're gonna pick up the heat and send the message via my sensory neurons or afferent neurons to my spine. Inner neurons will pick it up and take it to my brain. Okay, my brain will say, you should back away from that fire, it's really hot, send that via inner neurons to my spine, and then my spine will send a message to my leg saying, back up girl, it's too hot. Let's talk really quickly about reflexes, okay? We actually have reflexes that, they're just simply the action of inner neurons in our spine that bypass our brain for an evolutionary advantage, and you'll see why here as I explain it. So if let's say, ladies, you grab the wrong end of the curling iron one morning, or guys, you accidentally touch the frying pan as you're, I don't know, grilling your grilled cheese or something, right? <laughs> so that's incredibly painful and can be very harmful to your hand. So your sensory receivers or receptors on your hand will pick up that message, send it to your spine via sensory neurons. Interneurons in your spine will say, whoa, this is an emergency. They won't send the message to the brain. They'll just do a little U-turn back out to motor neurons saying, move your hand, dummy. 
and then your sensory neurons will carry the message of pain to your brain. You've probably experienced this before where you pick up like something incredibly hot and you drop it before even recognizing it and then feel the pain. That's a reflex.